Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of Autopilot version 8.1-2017-40.1 E29B97F. Uh, this is the first update that I've gotten in about a month and a half. That seems to be sort of the average for what I'm getting on my car, which are updates about every four to six weeks, roughly, with a few rare exceptions these days. Uh, this update brings a slew of new features, which is kind of cool. So we've got camper mode, we've got the uh, kilowatt output on superchargers, and we've got customization of home link distance. So now I am testing out the autopilot to see how it goes. Uh, so same turn, 30 miles an hour. Not bad. It's actually, so compared to the last version, it is doing a better job of not going into the center lane. It's also staying out of the bike lane pretty well. Nice. Wow. I would say that is a big improvement over what it was. It's still giving me the please hold the wheel because of the sharpness of the turn. So we'll go through our normal loop. I'll hang it right here on 90 second. Thankfully the light is already green. So that's one less edit that I'll have to do in the video later. Let's test out a few of the other not quite so documented features. So I'm going to, on this road that is reading is 40 miles an hour, try to engage the autopilot at 50 miles an hour, which it does with no problem because for some reason it's not, the, the autopilot, I don't know if people have necessarily noticed this, but at least for the roads where I live, um, technically speaking, autopilot on local roads, which this is, tech, this is a local road and it's a local road to autopilot because you don't see any lane change indication. Um, on local roads, uh, autopilot is supposed to cap at 5 miles per hour over speed limit. However, for some reason, let's see how it does with this stopped car ahead. Is it slowing down? Slowing down? No. Uh, it was a little too close for comfort. Alright. I think it would have jammed on the brakes before we actually hit the car, but that's one of the things that I like to test on the autopilot. But as I was saying, um, autopilot is supposed to cap you at 5 miles per hour over the speed limit on local roads, uh, which it does, but what it qualifies as a local road, like it seems to have three classifications of roads that are not really well documented. There are very local roads, like, I don't know, maybe it's single lane roads, like I don't know what the distinction is. Roads where it actually does cap you at 5 miles per hour for the speed limit. There are local roads, and I'm doing air quotes that you can't see, like the roads that I'm on right now, where it does know that it's not a highway because it doesn't give me the ability to change lanes. I'm gonna go ahead and re-engage the autopilot here at 40 miles an hour, see how it handles all this stuff. Um, does not give me the option of changing lanes, so it clearly does recognize as a local road, but it doesn't actually cap this, it doesn't cap the autopilot or auto steer functionality at five miles per hour for the speed limit. It shows me what the speed limit is. Uh, it's clearly posted at 35, but I can go ahead and put it up to 45, doesn't give me any problems. And then actual highways, um, oh, speed limit's down to 20 because of the school zone, so I'm gonna drop. We'll put it at 25, I think that's a fair compromise. And then actual highways, where it shows you the highway speed, does not cap you to five miles per hour over the speed limit, and does allow lane change as well. All right, autopilot, you're getting off a little easy this time since we only have to go through the section at about 20 miles an hour. I can't wait for autopilot to be able to recognize things like this, school zones, flashing lights, end school zone sign, automatically raise the speed limit. All right, it's had problems with this section being in the past. Ooh, nicely done. Um, so in the past, in earlier versions of autopilot, it has gone into that yellow center on that one. Let's see if it tries to take the turn lane. I thought about it and it decided against it. Let's see what it does with this funky section of road. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, nicely done. Wow, okay. It looks like they might have actually done some pretty decent improvements on this one. Uh, let's go ahead and let's see what it does with the stopped car. Okay, it's going way too fast. <laughs> I think it was going to send me right, launching through the turn lane going straight across the intersection. Hmm. Alright, so we'll make our right turn here. So, oh, let's look for speed limit signs. We'll do our loop again. All right, so we'll get back up to 40. So local, um, okay, yeah, yeah. So local road lane change. I'm still not seeing any evidence of that. Didn't give me any option or indication of that the lanes even existed on these roads. Like right here. Get a little toasty in here. Get the AC on. So put it up to 40. If 
five miles per hour over. It does, so it's very slight. It's not huge, and maybe this is something that'll get a little better. Um, but it, on right turns, it does seem like it's uh, it's turning a little bit too little, and it's drifting over the line a little bit. But I'll keep testing with that and see how that goes. All right, so I'm turning onto this road that I know does not have a speed limit posted in the GPS data. And we'll see about passing by a speed limit 25 sign, which we will pass by here shortly. Go ahead and turn on the auto steer just so we can see it in action. There's the sign, read 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 the sign, and nothing, yeah. All right, so they still have not, looks like, put in speed limit sign reading. But just for the heck of it, we'll go ahead and do the same turn loop again. Um, this time I'm actually gonna bump it up to 35 which is huh, weird. I don't know why this school zone is not flashing and the other school zone is flashing. These are two neighboring schools. Yeah, it's doing a better job, um, generally, of, of lane keeping for these sections. This is when they added the new um, longitudinal control. This section used to do a very good job on, but it would slow down obscenely uh, to the point that you would probably get honks from the cars behind you. Like in this 25 mile per hour area, it might slow down to like 15 miles per hour in a turn, but it really didn't need to. Um, then subsequent updates made it a little bit better where it would basically keep the lane just as well, but then it would um, it would not slow down as much. And then the last up, let's see, it was two updates ago, and I apologize, I don't remember the numbers because they're big and hairy now. Um, two updates ago, they seem to have made it a little bit worse, um, where it wasn't lane keeping quite as well. I'll touch the steering wheel and make it happy. Mm, nice job. Um, so it was actually drifting in and out of the lanes and it was making mistakes in intersections, like starting to cut into bike lanes and things like that. Um, so that one was actually kind of a noticeable step backwards. Yeah, it's, it's touching the line a little bit, but overall it's, it is much smoother. Like it's not, it's not doing short jerky motions like I've seen in the past, which is kind of good. Uh, and then the most recent update before this update improved upon what they seem to have broken with the update that I got two updates ago. So this one is the first one that feels like they've sort of brought it back to at least where it was um, when they added the new um, longitudinal control and then increased the speed at which it was willing to take turns so it didn't slow down too aggressively. So let's turn left here. All right, and I'd say that is a pretty good test for right now. Um, I've got a little bit more driving to do, uh, so I may create another test video, um, testing out some other circumstances later today. Thanks for watching.